So we'll use our beloved cube here for the purpose of our tutorial. Uh, first things first, make sure you have cycles enabled as your render engine. So let's start shading and making that gradient. So here you have your staple cube and uh, we need to make this new material. So click on new and uh, you have the principles uh, shader that comes per default. Uh, just put it aside a little bit to make room because all the other uh, nodes will come before it. So to make a gradient, of course, we need a color ramp. So shift A, color ramp, and actually make sure that the color goes into base color. So we can already control what's happening to a cube a little bit more. And uh, actually we want more control. We want to discriminate based on the axis. So the X, Y or Z axis. So we need uh, more nodes and you can either uh, add them as you go or what I advise is to go into edit preferences, go into add-ons here and uh, just look for the node wrangler type in node in the search box and you will see this little thing here called node node wrangler. Just enable that feature. It'll make your life a whole lot easier. So with color ramp selected, Go control T and you have a whole bunch of nodes that all of a sudden appear on screen. They're already attached. So we need to make a few changes here uh, to get the gradient uh, we want. So for the texture coordinate one here, we want the generated to go into vector of the mapping node. The mapping will stay basically the same. And what you want here, we don't want an image to drive our color ramp. Uh, and our shader, we want something else. We want uh, it to be the axis. So uh, we will swap this node for a different one. So to swap nodes is Shift S, which is quite a neat feature. Um, switch type to, and we go into converter and separate X, Y, and Z. And here you have it. You have it based on the X axis here. You can swap it for the Y axis. There you go. Or for the vertical one, the z-axis. And then you can do some cool stuff. Add more colors, for example. Uh, use different settings in the color ramp to make it really, really subtle. Or very, very clear cut, for example. Swap colors, etc. And... Uh, one last thing that's quite neat with the color ramp is that you can drive the principled alpha with the color ramp alpha. So you just connect this alpha into the alpha here, and then you can actually drive the transparency based on the color uh, sections uh, of your color ramp. And for example, if you want to make this middle thing really, really, really transparent, we can do so. Here you can see it. It's quite cool. Whoops, there you go. We have a box with the lid open. And there you have it. Thank you very much for watching and uh, have fun. See you next time.